G'day guys, we'll be going live uh, with Steve Cook today, um, which we are pumped about, so we'll just wait for Steve to jump on, um, and we'll be talking about, um, I guess, all things, what it means to be a man, and Steve's views um, in that space, so we'll just wait for him to jump on, should be a cracker. <coughs> Thanks guys for jumping on. Steve will just be on in a second. We'll just wait for him to jump on. So yeah, here at Momentum we're really trying to interview um, you know, inspiring men and women and um and get their views. So we've got Steve, here he is. G'day mate. How's it going? G'day, mate. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for uh, thanks for jumping on. Oh, no problem. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me. How's the, are you in Brisbane? I'm in Melbourne, actually. So Melbourne. That, yeah, have you have you been here? Oh, I love Melbourne. Melbourne's my favorite city in the world. It's good. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, it's a great yeah. city. So, mate, it's uh, it's pretty chilly here at the moment, though. It's, uh, I'll try to do the quick conversion. Yeah, it looks like you're all rugged up. Yeah, big, big time. So it's about 45 degrees Fahrenheit, maybe a bit. I'm trying to do the quick conversion for you guys. Probably. You'll be, you'll be all right. I, Celsius wise, it's about, so it's about 41 degrees Celsius here today. Oh, wow. Okay. So it's real hot. Yeah, real hot. Yeah. Oh, geez. I'm, I'm, I'm jealous, mate. Where are you? Are you, are you in, Utah or Idaho? Utah. No, I'm in Utah. Utah. So I'm in southern Utah, which is um, I'm about two hours north of Las Vegas. So we have similar weather patterns as Las Vegas. So it gets hot. Okay, nice. Yeah, I've I've skied in Park City. Is oh, that nice? Yeah, Park City yeah. is like four and a half hours from me. I'm closer to Vegas yeah. than it would be Park City, but um, yeah, okay. I've been to Park City quite a few times and super familiar yeah. with it. Park City is awesome. I mean. If, if if I could live in Park City um, part of the year and live in live in Australia part of the year, I'd be a happy camper. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure, mate. Um, thanks for, yeah, thanks again for jumping on for today. Um, to give you kind of, I, I know you watched the, the interview that we did with uh, Morgan, but to give you kind of a quick synopsis of what we're doing here at Momentum um, is really about, championing and challenging men to be better in all aspects of their life. So we've got our four main pillars, which is uh, muscle, mindset, mission, and masculinity. And we okay. try to, you know, really work on those four pillars um, and give as much education and, and tools and knowledge for men. And then as a result, their mental health will be, you know, um, a lot better. So, Whilst it's not one of our pillars, it is kind of we work preventatively on how do we create really strong, um, purposeful, you know, emotionally intelligent men. And then as a result, their mental health will be amazing or, or you know, as, as great as it can be moving forward. So we are super passionate about um, all things men's health and performance. And um, that's essentially, yeah, what we do here. So, mate, we are... We are greatly appreciative to have you on and kind of pick your brain around um, what you believe it means to be a man in today's society and, and I guess how that's changed over time as, as you've gotten older and you potentially found your way more as you, as you did get older and you found your, your passions and your purpose. Um, what, what does it mean to be a man? That's a, that's a great question. That's a great mm. question. And I think for me... Um, kind of my background and, and what has shaped me is I'm, I'm one of, I'm a big, I'm from a big family, one of seven kids, a dad who was a strength conditioning coach, uh, or a, he was a basketball coach, but an athletic director. And for us, that meant he was kind of like a strength and conditioning coach. Um, and, and so for me, I think the people that kind of helped shape my view of what being a man was really kind of revolved around athletics 
And that's somebody who I think, um, you know, you, you see leaders in athletics, you know, a team captain, and you try to kind of, you, you try to kind of carry that over to the rest of rest of life, someone who leads by an example. Um, you know, I think in today's society, in the US, especially, we're kind of starting to look at being almost the head of the household or a man. And it's like, oh, you know, we, we have a society kind of right now that wants to downplay, I think, the importance of strong men in a household and in a community. And it is something to me that it was such a big part of my life. And it's not to say that, you know, if you if you don't have a a masculine father in your life that you're 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 not going to grow up to be successful or a good man. I'm not saying that at all. But I do think that it's important to have people in your life that are that are, are those people that are role models for you are people that are guiding you in the right direction. And I think uh, men, you know, I've talked about this more so uh, even with Morgan. Whereas as a man, you know, I've kind of just, as a kid, I would sit and say to myself like, oh, I, I don't want to go to work every day. I see my dad going to work every day and, and my mom stayed home with the kids. And I was like, huh, oh, you know, uh, which was probably more work to be honest. But I would say, oh, I don't want to, you know, am I going to want to go to work every day and provide and, and this and that. Mm -hmm. And as I've gotten older, I think that there's things that happen in, a, in, in men's lives that kind of, lead us down a path, lead us down a direction that if you've had, if you have, if you have a good I think group around you, you have a strong value system and all of those things come, I think at an early age, but sports really for me taught me what it, what it meant to, to be a leader, what it mm -hmm. meant to be part of a team because yeah. I think in our, in our society, it's very indiv individualistic, meaning you want yeah. to try to get ahead. You, if you, you want to try to get somewhere fast, you want to try to climb, that you know uh that ladder quickly you do that as an individual but if you want to have longevity if you want to build something that lasts you do mm. it with a team because i think that if there's one thing that i can really pinpoint in my life is i do things well and i and i and i have things that i don't do well i don't want to spend the time in my life um trying to necessarily um do everything i think if you do if you as a leader and as i think the man in the household you need to trust your spouse you need to trust whoever it is with you that that they are um that they're going to i guess be a part of that team and can hold their you know can can really i, I guess be 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 a meaningful impact on the team and and allow people to really blossom not to mm -hmm. ever hinder anyone's growth so i think being a man is just facilitating um, people around you who who need to be lifted up and who need and this you know it could go for anyone but I think really as a strong man I look at, at somebody who physically you have attributes and you have all of the masculine traits but also it goes way beyond that it's if you're you know if you're the biggest and the strongest in the room you should also be the kindest and you should yeah. also have a very a very serving mentality like i'm i'm here to serve i'm not here so others serve me i'm here to serve other people whether that's in a community and a family on a football team whatever that is yeah i i uh, i love that man and that as you said you know growing up in that sporting background i was pretty similar um my dad here uh was a professional with our national sport is afl so yeah you may have heard oh you know because you've been out here of course you yeah. have you seen a game yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm a Carl. I have a Carlton hat. I don't know if Carlton's the enemy, but I, yeah, I went yeah, and trained yeah. with Carlton a little bit. So, uh, oh, that, nice. That, yeah, the the Carlton. I Morgan gives me crap for it because I think she goes for Geelong, but I've always yeah. been uh, a Carlton. Geelong a bit better of a team than Carlton at the moment. <laughs> so I can say that. But um, yeah, I grew up in a similar environment where you know sport was really um grounding for me my dad was a professional player and then a, and then a coach um of one of the teams up in sydney and then melbourne so my life as well was really revolved around sport um and as you said so so well around being a leader and what that looks like and how you know you can develop those leadership skills because no one's just born a leader and and through through sport especially it's such a great way to hone those leadership skills and, and as well, surround yourself with, you know, other men that can guide you outside of your family that, 
you know, if you've got good role models guide you in the right way and if you've got, you know, poor role models around you, they, they can lead you astray. And it's just so important to have those um, those father figures or those other men in your life yep. because um, I know you said um, you said just before, it doesn't make you like a bad person or it doesn't, you know, um, mean that you won't be successful if you don't have uh, a good male role model. But what the research shows us is actually the leading factor to um, essentially the leading factor in aggressive behaviour, criminality in boys, in young boys, is fatherlessness or a lack of a good, yep. strong male role model. Suicides, and, suicides, yeah. you, you name it. Everything goes up. Everything becomes yeah. a lot harder when mm. you don't have, A, two parents in the home or, B, uh, fa- you know, people without father figures. So essentially, yeah. if you don't have that father it's important to have that father figure for sure. Exactly right. And so when, when you were younger and you were growing up and you were finding, kind of finding your way in the world, were there any like stereotypes that you had to break through or go, okay, actually that's, that's not what my idea of, of a man was. It's actually more, um, it's more something else because obviously in Australia, there's, there's a massive um, stigma around, you know, men and their emotions not being able to cry, not being right. able to feel and, and open up. And so I'm wondering if, if it's similar in the States or where you grew up and, and your own experiences around stereotypes you had to break down. Yeah, I definitely think obviously growing up watching, you know, the tough male sports football, watching, you know, the, the movies with Arnold and that, that is, you're, you're the tough guy, you don't, you don't cry. And I think for me, um, I come from a blended family. And my dad was definitely, he, he didn't always show his emotions well. And mm. he was, he, it wasn't that, you know, he didn't love us or it wasn't that he didn't care. He just didn't know how to show those yeah. emotions all the time. And, you know, I, I think that big, being in a, from a big family, one of the things that um, you need to do well is communicate. So yeah. seven kids, if you don't communicate well, um, yeah. life can be tough sometimes. Yeah, seven, seven kids. Yeah, and, and having, you know, having sisters, too, it was like I learned how to communicate with the opposite sex. So mm-hmm. I think that early on, you know, when I, when I started dating, um, you know, like girlfriends and whatnot, I could talk to them and, mm-hmm. and, and, and not feel like, oh, okay, I can't, you know, I, I need to be this macho tough guy because around the opposite sex, I've, I've been able to, you know, uh, you know, my sister – she would beat me and my older sister would beat me in basketball. And I remember yeah. I'd throw the basketball at her and I'd cry and I'd get so mad that I lost because I was so competitive. But it, yeah. you know, learning to control those emotions to a certain point, but also yeah. not being scared, I guess, to, uh, to talk about how you're feeling. And I think that uh, that's something that, you know, we're not, men aren't supposed to be jealous. Men aren't supposed to, you know, so I think, the, you know, sometimes dating, um, you know, it, it, it's hard to communicate. You know, it's hard to, if you feel a certain way, you don't want to talk about it because it's not cool ever to be jealous. It's not cool to feel insecure. It's not cool to, to have these uh, issues that, you know, you don't want to let other people see because it's letting someone in, taking that guard down isn't always easy because, you know, we're, we're a judging society. We get judged all the time. Yeah. Yeah, exactly right. And it's funny reading, um, reading through your posts and even, even some of the comments um, on our live right now, there is like this box that um, men are put into, yeah. as you said. And, and I mean, I, I just did a quick scroll through your your feed. You're very like fun. Like you like to dance. You like to wear these crazy like loud outfits. Um, and you know, you probably you probably cop some flack as we're like we're, I'm seeing some stupid comments in the oh, in, yeah. the, in the live now. So no, there's, there's always comments like oh. Man, oh, if I if I post like in a leopard shirt, oh, sh- gay, the dude's gay, yeah. he's wearing a leopard shirt, so and I just laugh at it because I think it's so it's something that being secure in your sexuality. You know, I did a podcast with Lewis, with Lewis Howes, and I think uh, you know here in America, I, I feel like it might be a little bit different even than in Australia, um, mm. but I, I think that it's it's one of those things that I even did a video probably three or four years on like what it means to be metrosexual. And it was at yeah. the time I was like, that word was getting thrown around all the time. Metrosexual, what yeah. does that mean? It was a guy basically who cared about the way he looks. And I think yeah. that just genetically, some people look 
you know, more pretty boyish or whatnot. But I think that it's it's easy to just put people in boxes to talk about all yeah. oh, this guy just looks like he cares about his physique and and especially when I was competing, it was it was you definitely get labeled as a meathead, uh, yeah. pretty boy, you know, whatever it is. But I think at the end of the day, you have to you have to be you have to understand that not everyone's gonna like you. We're not we're not yeah. meant here to please other people. We're meant to I think live our our, our truest selves, our, mm -hmm. the lives that you know reflect. Um, you know, who we are as people. And for me, it's like, you know, I, I, I have no, I have no issues with the fact that, Hey, yeah, I'm, I'm into fashion. Like I designed my own gym shark, yeah. my, my gym shark strength collective line, like fashion and clothes are something that I've always been, I've been into. And, um, and I think for me, it's, it's always like, you know, I think as I've gotten older, I've probably cared about my, my looks less and less just because as you get, we get older, we're all going to, uh, we're all going to age. We're all going to end up as as a dried prune, pretty much. We're all going to end up old. And one of the best things that I kind of refer back to is I being in the fitness industry. It's all about looks. It's all yeah. about you know Instagram. We get on there and it's just instant gratification, and we're liking things based on look pictures that are beautiful. We don't often sit back and, and think of things as the content we're consuming. And and so mm -hmm. you know when people when people used to ask me like, oh, what is it like to you know have a career where your shirt's off all the time. I would say to people, it's important to realize that there's applesauce and peas and carrots. And what I mean by that is you give people the applesauce. Like when you're feeding a baby, there's their, their, their baby food is oftentimes applesauce, but in there there's peas and carrots. So yeah. I think that there's the applesauce on social media, which is, hey, you know, I look good. I do care about how I look. I like working out. That's all part yeah. of it. But the peas and carrots that come along with that are of those those points that talking about like hey like what are you what are you doing today to serve someone else what are you doing today to yeah. make someone who you love who's close to you happy like how are you how are you leaving this world a better place and that's something that I yeah. often think about mm. that's great what um what what are those I guess I'll use your analogy peas and carrots that you try to leave behind what are what are the what are the messaging that you want to convey to your followers and you know we all often the term influencer gets like lost on us you know like what are you influencing what are people what, what is the content we're consuming and also what's that what's those yeah. p's and carrots that you want to influence people on well and, and this is a great question and it's something that working with the people on the biggest loser um i kind of had to really nail home and yeah. because we we all you know even fitness is just a one example of this i'll be happy when like I'll be happy when I have a six pack. I'll be happy when X, when I lose a hundred pounds, if it was the biggest loser contestant, or I'll love myself when this happens. And that really goes for everyone across the board in life. We think, Oh, I'll be happy when I have more money. I think yeah. I'll be happy when, and, and I believe me, I need, I need to take my own advice oftentimes uh, more than other people. And this is why that I am constantly reminding myself, but there is no, destination that you get to because the moment as human beings the moment we arrive at something the moment we we get, we reach our goal that goal is now obsolete you're yep. now looking ahead you're now looking for that next goal you're now looking towards that other person who's a little bit higher than you on the ladder and you want to go yep. higher and you want to get better and you want to be richer whatever that is so the thing i'd always tell the people in the biggest loser you have to start loving yourself now Mm -hmm. And realizing that this it's a journey. You have to enjoy the journey because the destination really isn't the destination. It's always going to be changing. So yeah. I think it's, it's, it's about, you know, and, and Morgan and I, her being gone in, in back to Australia, it's kind of like, oh, you know, I wish, I wish, you know, obviously Corona was over and I, I wish the, the next two months went by in a, in a snap. And I'm wishing my days away. And I, I kind yeah. of caught yeah. myself doing this. The other day, I'm sitting here thinking like, ah, like I, I'm just not happy right now. I'm not happy because I don't have this person who, who I love and, and I want to be with her. But at the same time, it's like, okay, you still can be happy. You can still work on yourselves in other areas of life. And I think we see so much of that with people on social media. I'll be happy when I get to travel like this person. I'll be happy when I have a car like that person or when a body like this person or a girlfriend like this person. But if you, if you stop and, and all of a sudden you're thankful for what you have, you appreciate mm. what you've done in your life, you love that person staring back at you in the mirror, it gets so much easier to be around and all of a sudden you attract all those other things in your life. Yeah. 
Yeah, being that being in that constant state or trying to to be in that state of gratitude as much as possible is so important for just yeah, enjoying the journey as you said, just enjoying, you know, what you're what you're going through and not looking forward to tomorrow too much that you lose sight of what you're going through today. So, like, mate, I love that. I love that um that analogy and, and the peas and carrots. I just saw our uh, my business partner on Momentum just said he loved it too. So, mate, I, I, we'll be we'll be using that down the track for sure. But um, to talk about working out, and obviously our one of our biggest pillars is muscle. But we we again we're, we're similar to you in terms of we don't. It's not muscle in terms of you need to look a certain way and then that's what makes you a man. It's for us, and I'm sure for you as well. It's working out for your, your mental health but working out because it's a great way to build resilience is to start with your body. Start with that one thing you can control is your body. So I can build resilience on a daily basis and build right. something up. And it also gives you that self-confidence issue of, yeah, I can achieve that goal I set in place three months ago and I just did it. I just smashed out, you know, a two mile run under a certain time or whatever it is. So what does working out mean for you? Yeah. And working out to me, it's really just an extension of what I learned again, getting back to sports. And that's yeah. to push yourself. If you, if you are, uh, if you take this, this, you know, plunge into the fitness world and you start dedicating yourself to working on your body. And again, it's important to realize your body is an instrument, not an ornament. Yes. We want to look good. That's, that's a very valid thing you yeah. want, you know, that people want. It's part of life, but it can't be the only thing. Because I knew a lot of guys in the fitness industry that would look great, but on the inside, mentally, they weren't healthy. They were smoking because yeah. they were stressed out. They needed to stay lean all the time. So it wasn't a very mentally healthy place. Even when I was on the cover of magazines doing those, those bodybuilding shows and competitions, I wasn't my healthiest because mentally, I, I was one-sided. Uh, yeah. I couldn't hang out with friends. I couldn't relax. It was always about what time am I eating next? You know, have I, have I done my, all of my cardio today? And it became very unhealthy and unfun. So yeah. getting back to, to training for, to going in and just smashing a workout, it's the same things when you step on that football field and you've just left it all out on the field, whether it's the AFL pitch or whether it's the basketball court or the wrestling mat, whatever it is, you've learned how to push yourself past what you thought you could do. Mm -hmm. You and, and maybe, you know, you've learned a skill set that, you know, you weren't good at. You had to improve weak areas. And what that does, like you said, is it gives you self-confidence to then go mm -hmm. out and let's say you're not good. You're not performing well in work or your relationship is hard at that time. It teaches people not to quit when things get difficult. It teaches people that, OK, if I invest more time into this, eventually I'll figure it out. I'll get it done. It'll, it'll work itself out. And I think that to me, that's always it, it, it rings true in the gym. It rings true on the football field. And it's, it's me going into that gym, controlling what I can control for that hour and, and really giving it my all. So that the rest of the day, it's, it's a momentum. I feel like I've already been successful because I've gotten, you know, I, I worked out, I got, I got through that grueling, you know, set of back squats and now, Hey, boom, just check that off the list. Let's go on to the next thing. Keep the ball rolling. Yeah. It's funny. I think. Um. I think, and I'd be interested in on your thoughts or your mindset around training. I think people look at um those who do train every day, and there's almost a uh, like an assumption that oh, they just love to train every day. Like that's just they just wake up and they can't wait to train and then just get in the gym. And what I found, you know, after five years of consistently training, is that's not the case at all. Like there are a lot of the times I'm just going in because I just know I need to, I just need to get up, get it done and I'll feel better as a result. And it's yeah. not a case of, of, Oh, he just loves to train. It's like, no, I'd, I'd love to sit on the couch all morning too, but you know what? I got, I got either stuff to do or I need to train because it's, I know it's good for me. So do you, I mean, do you have those days where you just go, man, I don't need to train. I can't, I can't bother, but you get in there and you smash it out. 100%. And yeah. I think, over the years, love for the gym has come and gone. And, you know, it's, it's, the, it's there at times stronger than others. Um, but if I have a goal, if I have like, okay, I'm, I'm working towards, you know, whatever, a physique show uh, to build my bench press. Or if I, if I have this like goal every day, it makes it a little bit easier. An accountability yes. partner, somebody that you're showing up there every day. And you are, are, by you showing up, 
they have to show up and vice versa. There's going to be days that you don't want to, and they're going to hold you accountable and vice versa. So having somebody that does that for you as well, um, that, that helps out tremendously. And then I think ultimately it's, it's just about, again, it's the minute you stay on the couch and give yourself an excuse, it's going to be that much easier to do it the next day and the next yeah. day and the next day and the next day. So it's, it's the devil's in the details and yeah. You win, you win each day, you know, 20 minutes at a time, basically. And there's going to be yeah. times that you're not going to feel like going to the gym and you go to the, there's been so many workouts where I'm like, okay, I just got to, I just got to get to the gym and, you know, I'll take it easier today. I'll warm up. And by the time I'm warmed up, boom, I'm clicked right. on mentally, yeah. I'm checked in. I might read something beforehand on what I'm training that day. Cause we are what we think about. And we get, I, you know, like my life right now, it's busy. It's crazy. I'm selling my house, all these different things. So if I don't take that time beforehand and almost meditate, and, and, and to study and to, you know, really, really solidify that goal, it's easy to forget about it. And then it's easy to just say, ah, you know, tomorrow, mm -hmm. tomorrow. And you're still going to have those days. Everyone has days that they're going to talk themselves out of the gym or life gets busy or whatnot. The key is, though, is not to not to to really dwell on that, not to beat yourself up because, man, this this goes back to more of the, the, the dieting during my my competing career i would have one bad bite of something and i threw in the whole towel it was like okay if i've had a bite of that i'm gonna go <laughs> off the rails if i didn't count my macronutrients today i'm gonna eat every damn thing in sight and yeah. that was something that i kind of struggled with while i was competing of course i i really it was because i had you know basically had been depriving myself of, of, of nutrients for so long that as my body kind of pushing back and so you know you 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 learn to adapt and and, and do things like you know following you know, counting macros rather than flexible dieting, rather than just chicken and tilapia style yeah. diets. But um, yeah, there's, there's going to be times you just don't feel like doing it. And the key is on those days, it's, it's hey, you got to have a short memory. You didn't go tomorrow, boom, go to the gym tomorrow, hit your hour, you know, don't try to make yeah. up for it. Don't do two hours. Because that's another thing I see people every January. It's like, I am going to go to the gym every single day. I'm going to eat perfectly. I'm going to get sleep. I'm going to do this, this and this. And all of a sudden, when one of those things fails, they all kind of crumble down. And then three months later, we're into March. And it's, hey, how are you doing with that New Year's resolution of going to the gym? Yeah, I couldn't do it. And it's like, no, no wonder you couldn't. Like, your, your goal that you set for yourself was way beyond anything that you are currently doing. Yeah. Yeah. There's some great, so, there's some great pieces that, that you just touched on around being clear on your goal. Because someone like you are going to have – vastly different goals to, to the av average person who just wants to lose 20 pounds. Yeah. So if they try to go, well, I'm going to do what Steve's doing, I'm going to get my sleep and hit my macros and do It's like you've never done any of that before. Why don't you just step into a gym and get a 30-minute walk-in on the treadmill? Like yeah. start there and start small because then you'll feel better about yourself for accomplishing that goal rather than feeling worse about yourself for not accomplishing a goal that was probably too hard to, to achieve anyway. Right. And I did um I did a uh, Andy Frisella's seventy five hard challenge. I'm not sure have I've you seen that? You heard of it? Yeah. So and again, touching on what we were talking about before around the gym or or working out or your body is such a great way to start to build discipline in other areas of your life. When I was doing that, man, I was on in every aspect of my life. Like because I had to do these things that really taught me discipline around my body. It was like okay, I need to respond to this email. And instead of doing the, oh, I'll respond to it later, it was like, I've already, it's like, bang, I've responded to the email. It was like, bang. And I was so disciplined in other areas of my life because you do, you start to build self-confidence in what you can achieve because you're going, well, I just smashed out my second workout for the day for 14 days in a row and I'm, and I'm drinking my water or whatever it is. I feel really good about myself and I'll, and I'll transition that into other areas of my life. Yeah. Um, it's so true. Like the, the mm -hmm. times actually prep prep for a show is grueling. You know, you, when people get ready for bodybuilding shows, you know, they're, they're halfway insane. But what you do is you a learn a lot about your body, but then yeah. you have to be so regimented. You have to be so on top of your schedule that you make time. And all of a sudden it's like my life actually is, be, is a lot more productive actually when I'm prepping because everything has a time slot. Now, again, it, it's probably not doable year round to live like that because other you know relationships suffer or you know other areas suffer but it's like you are 100 percent focused on your life your fitness goals and even like you know for me youtube has always done better when i prep for a show 
um, Instagram has always gone up because again, people love following the journey and they can see yep. the amount of work that you're doing. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And for those listening as well, I think it's important to remember, you know, we talk a lot what, with what we do around being value aligned and being in alignment with your values, whatever that, whatever that looks like. And, and just, first of all, having that conversation of well, what are my values and then you can kind of align what you're doing in relation to what your values are. And for those who don't, because, I mean, you and I are obviously massive advocates for working out for, for health reasons. If that's not high on your values, what you can do is what's called look at your value hierarchy, which is, you know, you've got seven, I think it's seven or to nine values and they're, they're ranked in order. So your number one might be family. And then it might be career and then it, then it might be health down below or something. So a great way to rewire your thinking um, is to look at your value hierarchy and go, well, health is number nine on my values, but family is number one. Right. You know, back to, back to, being, to being men and being that leader and, and the leader of the family, you can go, well, if, I, if family is my number one value, I probably I need to be healthy to look after my kids, to be around for a long time. To, to look after them as they get older, to play with them. So all of a sudden it's not about like the six pack or the, or whatever. It's about, well, I'm working out for my family. And then that gives you that motivation, that drive to go, cool, I'm in the gym because I'm right. doing it for my family. And you can, you can do that with any aspect of your values. It's just about having that conversation, which I don't think enough people do, I, I, especially here in, um, I mean, I can speak from, from Australians' point of view, but I'm sure Americans are similar where, how often do people sit you down, sit down and go, Steve, like, you know, what are your values? Like, what, what do you value? Like, you right. probably have that conversation a lot more than, than the average person. Yeah, and, you know, it is interesting because I think that there are still times that because of everything that happens with life, sometimes, you know, you're looking at something here and you need to take a step back and, and, and that's where that, that value hierarchy really comes into play there. It's, it's really hard, I think, sometimes. And that's what something like travel does, or that's what someone in, in a relationship, you know, someone that you love, they point out those types of things for you. It helps keep you balanced because I think there's definitely, it's hard once you've started a pattern or habits to then break those habits yes. or patterns and, and, and get out of a, a rut or to get out of a, so I think, again, it's, it gets back to having, surrounding yourself with good people and then yes. allowing yourself, you know, time to be creative or a vacation to really reset your brain and and put priorities in there and that's one thing i think australia just about everywhere in the world does better than the united states i think is is holiday time and i think you know australians for the most part you know i'm in a good place in in the world in utah that really values family but i think australia the thing i've loved in the 12 times i've been over there is i feel like there are some really cool family centered like i, I it just seems like family centered people that I've met that I'm like, Oh, you know, it's cool to see that there's a lot of similar values in, in, in Australia to a place like Utah, Idaho, Arizona, those places. Those are just the yeah. places I've really lived. So that's all I'm kind of judging it off of. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. And mate, I'll, I kind of want to round out the conversation a little bit now towards the end and, and ask you, I guess a more, a more personal question. And, and where, where has, I guess, a time in your life where you were, you know, really struggling um, and you've had to overcome that? Like a moment where you're like, yeah, geez, I was, I was battling hard there, but I, I had some tools in place or even a time where you didn't have the tools and you had to go out and, and seek, you know, outside help or, or go out yeah. and find those tools. Yeah, that's, a, that's also a really good question. I think for me... Um, you know, when I got divorced early on, so I was, I was married at 21, divorced at 23 and a half. Um, relationship just from the very get-go, shouldn't have, shouldn't have gotten married. Too young, didn't yeah. know who I was. Same, same goes for her. She ended up uh, cheating on me with a doctor that she worked with. And it was really a time when I was like, man, like, this is not the, like, I'm getting divorced now. Like, what, what do I do? What am I doing with my life? I was a, I was, I've told this story before, but I was a college football player with that had the goal that I wanted to go to the NFL that that was no longer on the table for me so it was like I had to totally reevaluate my life and I think getting back to surrounding yourself I had my my dad um, who really helped me out and, and and really just was like man you know 
your your life you're you're still young you got the whole world ahead of you you know you 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 can do anything you want went back mm. to school and started you know taking care of my body it was like the one thing that i could take care of in my life it was like okay yeah. it, it, i can't what i can't control i can't control i can't worry about those things what i can control is is my body how i think and, and what i do with my body so going into the gym uh working out controlling that hour in the day and then going back finishing my college degree prepping for a show and it was really a time in my life that was just it was momentum one good thing happened got my college degree won a show got picked up by optimum nutrition picked up by bodybuilding.com started a youtube and then kind of just grew 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 um yeah. so those those have been i think that that time in your life where you feel like ah, i can't get ahead or things are just hard those are usually the times when you look back and you're like man i was just you know i hate to use the word but just i was just grinding there i was just doing what i everything i could to get by and realize those times of that hard work then set you set you up for a breakthrough later on in life. Now, I'm not saying, you know, doing the same thing over and over again and failing, you know, like that's, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, you know, having goals and setting them and reaching them. So I think there's a lot of people out there that, you know, like for me, when I lived in California, it was like, man, what am I, what am I doing out here? I, am I, I just, I, I didn't have any goals. It was like, you know, I, it was hard. It was difficult. I didn't like it, but I, I wasn't doing anything to change that. So that was the big difference. I think that there's that, like, that idea of like, oh, I just got to stick things out. But if you don't have any goals and if you don't have any clear cut path, yeah. you need to get those first and foremost. Yeah, absolutely. And back to what you said at the very start around when losing that, um, I was listening to this podcast actually by Jocko Willink and he yep. interviewed um, one of his Navy SEAL mates and he was saying like how the hero archetypes, how oh, we're starting to shift. So, rather than admiring the the man that can or the female but the, the, or the person that can get through tough times we're now starting to admire the victim and the victim is yep. becoming that hero archetype and i think like the ability to as you just as you said like go through something difficult and and you know okay cool what do i need to do what can i control yep. um focusing on that and then building that resilience and, and being able to get through is a much more desirable place to be in or a much more desirable hero archetype than the one who faces challenges and crumbles. And yeah. that's not to say that um, there won't be times where that happens. Like, there's been times where, man, I've come up against something and I've not been prepared enough, I've not been resilient enough, and and I don't look at it as crumbling, but I look at it as like, damn, that, that hit me hard and I had to take time, like, to look after myself and really, like, yeah. you know, do that work that's needed. But again, that's what's going to build you up to be more resilient, like doing the work and not shying away from, from your challenges. Um, yeah, and that gets back to being a leader. Mm. Again, the same thing you learn, you learn in sports, where I think it's so imperative that kids, kids learn something sports-wise, get your kids in sports, because um, who do you blame when things go wrong? Who do you blame when – is it society's fault – you know, yep. and, and that's kind of what you're talking about now. It's this victim, that archetype is, you know, if you can, if you can get more from people by playing the victim, you're going to continue to play that victim. But when you lay your head on the pillow at night, you know yep. that you're playing the victim. You know, you know your truth. And I think that that's yep. really the important thing here is that if you, uh, if, if, if you can do that and lay your head on the pillow at night, like I, I don't want you on my team. If you can play the victim and because, again, you, you've learned to – put things on everyone else to, yeah. and I don't, I don't want to be, you know, you're, they say, you know, you're, you're the sum of the five people you surround yourself with. I don't want you in my five. And that's just yeah. the way it is. Like, no, no offense. But if you're always the victim, if it's always someone yeah. else's fault. It's really hard to have a relationship with you where I'm not the bad guy. And so yeah. it's like, Hey, anything in my life. Um, and, and this is what I had to learn going through a divorce. It was like, okay, there's some shit I did that I needed to change. I, yeah. I need to be more of a man and take take some responsibilities. And then yeah. also, okay, there's I, I didn't finish my degree. I need to stop being, you know, depressed about the fact that I didn't make it to the NFL. You need to pick yeah. up yourself and you really have two options. You can sit there, blame other people and do that for the rest of your life and always yeah. be the victim. Or you get through it, you fight through it, and you end up, you know, realizing that, that all that all those things that led you to a moment of, hey, I'm a success now because I had to go through all these hard times and, and I, yeah. I pushed through all of that. 
Yeah, man, I, 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 I love that. Like, I love everything you say. It's like, give me goosebumps. Like, I love that um, mentality around, yeah, like, focus on what you can control. And I love that you decided to use that divorce as an opportunity to, to work on yourself and go, okay, where, where can I take personal responsibility here? Yeah. And you didn't stop there. Like, you actually was like, okay, where can I take personal responsibility? And where can I go and change? And you went out and got a degree. Like, you, you stopped focusing on NFL. You, you changed your career path to bodybuilding. Like, I think there's so many great lessons to be learned through you sharing that story and, and your journey because, you know, as you said, like, yeah, um, the divorce would have been difficult and you can blame the partner, but that's going to leave you you know, still depressed and still sad. And you, you took the other way to go, well, I can do that. And I, and people would look at me and be like, yeah, that's fair enough, but I don't want to be in that place. And it's time to, to take responsibility, move on, do what I need to do. And I lo- I just love that mentality and, and love that. um, Yeah. That mindset. Yeah, my, my favorite quote is, you know, life is 10% what happens to us and 90% how we react to it. And again, there's yep. going to be things you can't control in life. There's just, there, there's the circumstances you can't control. We can't control disease. We can't control yep. what we can control our, our reaction to, to those things. And that's one thing I, I, I love about Morgan and my relationship right now. I feel like she really gets it on that same level in terms of like, you know, when we do have kids, they're going to be little animals because they have a dad that thinks a certain way and a mom that thinks similar. You know, I think that raising strong men is, is important as a dad is having a mom is, is just as important to, like, you know, just as important to, to be that person that, that's nurturing at times, but also can say, you know, like, hey, I'm not going to coddle you. Like, life's going to be difficult. And, and I'm not here to, to necessarily, um, I, I guess, facilitate all of the weaknesses that you're, you're showing. And it's like, you know, if you have a mom that, that will make you own your shit, you, I think, are going, if you have that woman in your life, um, tell her thank you out there if you're watching because those, yeah. those women are, are so, so crucial, I think, in, in people's lives. Yeah. And it's a great, um, great bridge to try to talk about that relationship piece around how have you had to either you've stepped up personally or how has Morgan kind of forced you to level up being in a relationship? Because, um, you know, Morgan and I spoke about that long distance factor is really difficult and how important communication is how did you yep. work on communication or how did you realize okay like i'm going head in in this relationship rather than taking the other way of oh this is probably gonna be too difficult yeah and i'm just gonna i'm just gonna back off and and i'm good well i, I definitely think I've, I've had experience being 35 years old i I've, I've i've dated enough to know um you know what my weaknesses and what my strengths are and i i i, I now have the unique insight to to really tell I've dated some, you know, I've dated enough people in my life to say, oh, okay, this is going to work out or it's not. And with Morgan, she really is this person that where it's like, it's very easy for me to be like, okay, we are, we are able to be ourselves. That's always crucial in a relationship. We're, we're able to really put each other first. Mm. And I think that ultimately we communicate really, really well. If there is anything that's on my mind, on my heart, I talk to her about it and vice versa. And it's, it's you know, I think the hardest thing is, is it's just like anything else in life. It's easy to, 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 to just stay surface level. It's easy to go through the motions in the gym. It's harder to have a meaningful workout. Yeah. It's harder to get, you know, and, and that's, that's the kind of relationship that I want too. Is like, okay, we're not going to allow ourselves to grow apart. Just because you're in Australia and I'm in the U.S., we're not going to allow ourselves to have, you know, meaningless conversations and, and check in and check out. Or we're not going, we're going we're gonna to have purposeful conversations. We're going to talk to each other. Um, about things that might be bothering us or the good things, the bad things. Morgan, you know, her grandma died the, 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 the day she basically, the day before she was supposed to get out of quarantine in her hotel. So she's been through some crap getting back yeah. to Australia. For me, you know, I haven't gone through as much. It's just like my, my life changed, her life changed. You know, we were together 24-7 to going yeah. to being apart. And that's, that's never easy. It's like, you know, your other half. But I think it's, it's like, for me, it's like I, I, I've, I've been around long enough to know um, the relationships that I want to have in my life and I don't. And so for me, it's no amount of distance or time is, is going to change the fact that like, I feel like, you know, Morgan is that, that person for me. So I think for us, it's just like, Hey, you know, tough times, 
tough times don't last tough people do so we just need to get through this and yeah. we, we we know there's things we can do um talking on the phone every single day getting deeper into conversations reading together is one of those things we do and it's yeah. just about sacrifices you make when you really truly value the relationship yeah and how important are those sacrifices to um ensuring that you know you you and morgan you know have a successful relationship or feel connected um yep. or feel like you know you're both in this together because i feel morgan and i touched on it a little bit around you know this concept of like love me for who i am and if you don't then like piss off and this new this new like ideology around uh relationships meant, meant, meant to be easy and it's not meant to be difficult and yep. it's like really strange to kind of read and see the instagram quotes and all that like how important are those sacrifices um that you guys both make to make it work yeah i i, I think again grass is greener on the other side mentality we have that in yeah. day and age and i i'm a type of person that i i have in in the past uh in past relationships you know, kind of thought that in some regards, but it's also been one of those things. I was, I was not in the right relationship too. Um, but I think really what, what you ask yourself is like, okay, is it, is it, is it something that is fundamentally wrong with the relationship or is it me? Do I need, do I need to give myself a swift kick in the ass? Because again, everyone, you know, everyone's a human being and you know, they'll notice if there's a good looking man standing there, if you're a girl, or if you're a guy, you know, you, you notice people that you're attracted to, like that's human nature. But we all, we all need to realize that like real relationship takes sacrifice. Real relationship takes you owning things. And, and it's not to yeah. say that, you know, every, anyone's perfect, but I think that ultimately the thing that kind of led me to like, okay, what am I doing here? If, if I'm not in, if I'm not into something with my whole heart, I need to, I need to, to finally cut ties. And that was something that was always hard for me because I was always trying to, to make things work, make things work. But I think ultimately, um, you know, it's one of those things that if you can put someone else's feelings before yours, you know, it, it's, that's like, that, that is true love. And I think it's really like, okay, if, is this pattern of behavior? If I'm always thinking the grass is greener on the other side, just take a step back and realize no matter who you're with, you're going to be thinking the grass is greener on the other side, which really reflects on you not being happy with who you are, with what yeah. you have. So it's not that other person. No one's going to make you happy. You yeah. have to be. You have to be happy and 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 want to be in that relationship. So I think sometimes it's it's not a it's not a you know I think for two people to really be in in love and in a really good relationship, it's timing and it's obviously the right person. Um, yeah. And I think with with Morgan, you know, I've gone like I said, I've gone through a lot of relationships and I've kind of wound up in this place. Um, in a relationship with Morgan halfway across the world. And I haven't been, I've never been happier in a relationship just because yeah. I think I'm in a good place in my life where I'm like, okay, I, I've dated enough people. I, I know what I do and don't look for in a relationship. And I've, I've found somebody to me that, that, that makes those things, the distance and, and the, the work that goes into a relationship, uh, all yeah. worth it. That's awesome, man. Well, if it, uh, helps my parents actually did long distance my mom's from california my dad's obviously from melbourne australia and they're oh, nice. 20, 28 years married now so they're still nice. together and um, how they meet? So, pardon how did they meet uh dad was dad did a footy trip in hawaii and then him and his best mate went um from hawaii to san diego where mum was studying and they they met in a bar actually so and then <laughs> back then like you know, it would have been so difficult, but they managed to swap phone numbers and. Oh, uh, see, and then, that, yeah, and that's probably at a time before. I mean, before cell phones, before yeah. social media. You know, we yeah. have, we have the luxury of of FaceTime and <laughs> instant access to each other. I can't imagine yeah. getting to a landline, calling yeah. long distance, and making it work. So kudos, kudos to your parents. Yeah, yeah. So, mate, if they can do it, I'm sure you and Morgan can too. But um, yeah. we'll we'll finish on one last question, mate. We'll. Uh, what um what would be the key takeaway or the or the the number one i guess piece of advice you would give to men um that are either struggling or just looking to level up in their life and and looking to kind of take the next step in into you know finding meaning finding purpose being happier what is that one kind of key key piece of advice you'd like to leave everyone with that that's always a good question um, I, I think it's, it, we all want purpose in our lives. If you can find your purpose in life, 
um, you know, it makes each day a lot easier because you're waking up moving towards that. And, and oftentimes I think people kind of struggle with, oh, if I don't have purpose, if I don't know what I want to do, but men especially, we have, we're, we're conditioned to think, you know, grow up, get a job, provide for the family. So there is a pressure. I know in America at, you know, 18, 19, 20, 21 years old, start thinking about who you want to be, the job you want. And a lot, oftentimes I think it leaves young men feeling like, ah, I don't have my life together. But you're not yeah. supposed to have your life together. You're not supposed to allow yourself to, to go through the ups and downs. Allow yourself to fail. Don't be afraid to fail. And, and even off of uh, Finding Nemo, my mom you know, always quoted, you know, just keep swimming. It's one of those yeah. things that it's, if life's kind of like a river. And if you're on the sideline, you know, if you're on the sideline, you just need to jump in and it, it, yeah. it'll take you somewhere. It might not be exactly where you end up, but at least yeah. you're doing something. At least you're moving. At least you're experiencing. At least you're doing. If you just stand yeah. by and, and think, well, I don't want to fail, so I'm not going to I'm not going to make this decision because if I if I do it and I fail, then I'm a failure. No. You make decisions if you fail, you try again and try again and try again until you're a success. So I think young men out there, don't be afraid to fail. Um yeah. but, but more so than that, be afraid not to start. So many yeah. and I'm a, and I'm kind of like this. I you know, I I needed to tell myself this and it's you know like you will fail at things, but that's part yeah. of the journey. But through yeah. that, those failures, you realize then what you're good at. And, you know, it's, it's hard. It's hard to beat somebody that never gives up. So it's like, yeah. you know, whatever, whatever you're doing out there, you know, and, and eventually you'll land on what you're passionate about and what you're good at. And, you know, it kind of just clicks. But the only way yeah. it won't click is if you don't try from the first place. Yeah, absolutely, mate. That's such a great, great finished to to our interview and i just wanted to thank you steve for for jumping on and and giving up your time um on a what are you tuesday night um no so mate, I've, I've been i've been following your journey personally for for a few years now so keep keep doing what you're doing mate we we love you over here at momentum and thank you so much for being you know such a great role model to young men everywhere you know we do really need more more men like you out there using their platform, you know, for, for good. And we appreciate you jumping on and really opening up, being vulnerable with me. We've never met. This is the first time we've met. So I really do appreciate um, you jumping on, giving up your time, mate. You just, that was such a great interview. And there was so many, so many nuggets on there. I will post it to our Instagram. So if you missed it, you jumped on late, it will be available to watch again. Um, Steve dropped some absolute gold there. So, mate, thank you so much. You've just, um, yeah, you, you killed it, mate. Thanks. So, thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah, this and something uh, you know, you guys inspire. I think watching the fact that you guys aren't afraid to talk about, you know, what it means to be a male. And I think one thing I want to do is is talk more about this. So, we're actually going to be starting a podcast with fitness culture. A lot of it's going to be fitness stuff. But one thing we want to do is is talk specifically about, you know, the male the male mm. stigma or things that we go through. So yeah. I appreciate what, what you guys are doing in forwarding those, those topics and, 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 and really that, that, that back and forth about what this all means. Yeah. Thank you, mate. Thank you. We'll have to go on for a part two somewhere down the line. And, yes, sir. Uh, yeah. And uh, take care, mate. Have a good night. All right. I appreciate you. Thank you.